So I gotta tell you the craziest story that has ever happened as far as one of my rentals and what I had to do in order to take care of my guest. Now this video is not just going to be for Turo and guests, this is going to be for an overall customer service experience and what you need to do in order to make sure that you take care of your people if you run any kind of business related to customer service. Let's get into it. What is going on everybody? Welcome to another video. So as I mentioned, I want to tell you about the absolute craziest story that ever happened as far as a rental was concerned. Some headaches that the guest had to go through, some headaches that I had to go through in order to make this trip happen. And my hope that you get out of watching this video is that you never give up when it comes to taking care of a customer or a guest and making sure that every experience is the best that it possibly can be and that you are taking care of the people that need to be taken care of. Because I could have walked away from this whole situation and allowed it to just get canceled but let me get into what exactly happened. So it started on a Wednesday night. We did have our Chevy Spark booked for a guest that was supposed to be picking it up on Wednesday night. Now, the only thing that makes the Spark different from any of the other cars on my fleet is that the Spark is a Turo Go car. Now, what exactly is Turo Go? Turo Go is a service that is offered on the Turo app that allows the customer to get to the vehicle, unlock and lock the car from the app. It also saves them the necessity of having to send their driver's license or their selfie with their license to the host. It is already verified, so we basically just release the vehicle as a host, and as a guest, you go straight to the car and unlock it directly from the app. Now, prior to the trip on Wednesday, Turo Go did have some issues. So I contacted Turo, made sure that the trip was ready to go, and it was. They had to switch things from Turo Go back to non-Turo Go and then back to Turo Go, but everything was working just fine. Now I left the car, everything was good to go. I came home, went to bed, didn't think anything was going to happen until I woke up Thursday morning. Then I received a bunch of messages that they couldn't get the car open, that all of these things were happening and they never ended up getting the car. So the first thing I did was contact Turo Support, try to figure out exactly what was going on with Turo Go and why the car wasn't working. They tried some troubleshooting steps. I was still running into some problems. I waited for the guest because these messages were coming in at like two o'clock in the morning. So I didn't want to contact the guest early. So I figured I'll just wait and see if it's around 10, 10.30, then I'll decide to call them and see where we stand. Finally got in contact with the guest. They had to drive an hour and a half from the airport, were not able to get the car, and basically the car was still at the airport waiting for them to pick it up. Now I made sure to level set with the guest. Unfortunately, my phone had gone into a focus mode. If you have an iPhone, you know what focus is. It put you into sleep mode at night and my alerts never went off so I didn't even know that there was anything going on in the middle of the night so that was totally my fault and I explained that to the guest. Now as far as the app that is a functionality issue that was on Turo so we got in contact with Turo support I suggested to the guest to contact them because that was what my power host support told me to do. Turo support then in turn decided to cancel her trip so I in turn ended up getting back on the phone with power host support and talking to them and saying, hey, this is not what the guest asked for. This is what the guest needs. At this point, I didn't even care if I got any earnings or not. This guest is here for reasons that I'm not gonna get into, but it's not a vacation. That's all I'm gonna say about that. And I felt really bad. And I really just wanted to make this aspect of the experience a little bit better. And I told Turo Support, I really didn't even care if I got paid the amount of money that I was gonna get at this point. Let's just take care of the guest. There are situations as a business where when you are in this for the customer, Customers and not for the money, you will start to think more about the customer than you will about the monetary aspect. Do I want to make money? Of course I do. But do I want a better guest experience than what this person is dealing with right now? 150% absolutely. So while I was on the phone with Turo Support, they were able to change the trip to what it's supposed to be. I in turn 
took the car to the guest in a different area so that I can make things convenient for them because this is not their fault. Technically, the only thing that I did wrong was I did not answer the phone in the middle of the night, which yes, I wish I would have, but there is a functionality problem within the Turo app that clearly messed both of us up, me as a host, that person as a guest. So while the situation was very unfortunate all the way around, I fought to make sure that this guest gets their booking, is still able to get the car, and I took the car from the airport an hour away to the guest to make sure that they were still able to complete their trip. There are so many times when I have seen businesses not willing to take care of their customers because they are so focused on how their business is run that even if the customer is wrong, they don't take the time to explain to the customer what their reasoning is for why things are the way they are. Especially for smaller businesses, you can't just look at somebody and be like, well, I'm right, you're wrong. This is my business. I get there are situations where maybe you might want to be a little bit more stern or you feel some of that passive aggressiveness come out of you. And if that ends up happening, I mean, we're all human, those things can happen. And there are situations when those types of answers might be warranted, maybe. But the point that I'm making here is I could have had an opportunity when that trip got canceled for me to just walk away from it, wash my hands of it, and say, you know what, I'm just gonna leave it alone because this guest might leave me a bad rating or this guest is already upset as it is. What more can happen from here? But I really wanted to take care of this person and make sure that they get the car they need, that they're able to complete their trip and that there are no more issues from here. So my point is when you're a business, make sure that you're taking care of your customers. Make sure that you are listening to them, understanding them, and know that sometimes when people are in a bad mood or when they're snapping at you or when they're upset with you, that it may not just be you. It may be something that they are dealing with that you don't even know about. And the more you demonstrate empathy for their situation, the more you can put that person's mind at ease and be able to handle the situation and take control and come up with a solution that's good for both you and the customer. I once used to work in a call center and I used to take many calls where people were angry and I would sit on the phone and just listen to them and listen to them and listen to them and sometimes they just needed somebody to allow them to rant and once they were done, you were able to kind of move along and give them what they needed in that moment. So take the opportunity to listen and see what it is that the customers need even if they might be upset, swearing, they might not be swearing at you, they might be swearing at the situation. So take things with a grain of salt, listen with empathy, and you never know how that situation might turn out. And now we are inside and we have two new cars to add to the collection here. We have a Porsche 911 GT3, beautiful black car. I will take it off the platform here in just a moment. And then we have a Ferrari Monza SP1. Very interesting looking car. And we will get this one off the platform as well and get it on the shelf. All right, and here they are off of their platform. I will say the Porsche is a little less detailed compared to what they used to be. We do still have an opening hood so you can see the front area. And we still have also opening doors. Um, but we do not have the engine bay opening up in the back, so you just get to see the back end of the car. So it's not as detailed as some of these other cars. I'll show you a couple of them over there and what they used to look like. And then we have the Ferrari Monza. You have the opening hood right here, and you can see the engine there. We have a functioning door, and then we also have the back end with plenty of space in there. So let's add these to our shelf and show you where they're going to go. So as I mentioned before, Porsches of old used to be able to pop open this back end here. Used to be able to see the engine inside here. They obviously have made some changes. Now granted that other one does have a spoiler, so maybe that is part of it, but we are going to take the 911 and we're going to put it right here next to the others. And that kind of completes this shelf here. And I had to do a little bit of research on this one because I needed to see when it was made and it was around the 2018-2019 model year. So 
with the LaFerrari being in 2013, from what I was able to find, we're going to put this one right here. And then we have our group of Ferraris. Now I will say, my kids, especially my middle child, is very big on spotting the new cars when they're on the shelf. So I am curious to see if he finds it. So stay tuned and maybe I'll be posting maybe a TikTok or something like that and uh, see if he spots the car. So, but that is gonna do it for today, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing if you like what you're watching on this channel. If there's anything you want me to talk about Turo-wise, if you are thinking about booking a car on Turo and you want me to cover something on a video, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you would like me to talk about and I would love to come up with some lists and put your mind at ease before you decide to book a car on Turo. But I wanna be on here and be transparent with you all and show you some of these experiences and know it can happen even to the best of us. But if you have a host that is all about solutions, then we are going to come up with a solution to the problem and we will not leave you hanging out to dry. If you are looking for a car in Jacksonville, visit achewrentals.com. We have everything from small compact cars. We still have those beautiful minivans. We got a blue RAV4 outside today, and we have many, many more for you to choose from uh, here in Jacksonville. So visit achewrentals.com if you need to book a car. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.